one, two, three, four, five. Welcome back to the TMCJ podcast. We are on episode 78, and we have just had a deluge of technical issues trying to get started this morning. This is the third time we've tried it, and I just blew up Blue's eardrums. Yeah, I dead. blew out straight out. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm just glad it wasn't me having the technical issues for a change, because it's always me normally. Nice change of pace. Uh, anyway, so jumping right into today, uh, we have some interesting current events to uh, chat about, specifically uh, the thing that set the gaming internet ablaze. Microsoft, ablaze. Microsoft yes. bought Blizzard and Activision for like $60 True. billion. Dollars. Yeah, because Blizzard... Were Blizzard and Activision partners, or did Blizzard buy Activision before? Other way around. Activision, Activision part- bought Blizzard. Oh, was it that way around? Yeah. Because I always think of Blizzard as being bigger than Activision. Yeah, Blizzard. it's because Blizzard kind of has their own games that they make and self-publish, uh, but mm. Activision was a publisher, and you got to realize, I think they owned like the Call of Duty franchise. Yeah, they do. And that's, that's uh, just a cash cow. Yeah, and so, man, if you think about it, now... Now Microsoft has the, uh, has the, what's the word? The Monopoly. They have Halo and they have COD. <laughs> That's actually a very good point. That's but the dangerous. thing is, and actually this is a fun little uh, financial fact that I, I was reading the other day. Um, since Microsoft announced this purchase, mm. Sony's stock has dropped by like $20 million. Like their, their total like net worth. It's not a huge drop considering the size of Sony. But it kind of shows that Microsoft is literally, it, it, it seems like we're going to end up with these two giants. There's going to be Sony and there's going to be Microsoft and like the gaming side of things. Um, and then there's Nintendo off in the corner, just not giving a shit about what anyone else does and still doing their own thing. They got their own platform, their own games. And they're happy to f- stay the fuck away from everyone else. Yeah, they'll put out a Mario game every four or five years and just be happy. Yeah, it'll be exactly the same as all the other Mario games for the last ten years and... <laughs> People will snap it up at premium prices. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although I did play through all of Mario. Mario Odyssey was the first game I played in a while. Yeah, um, was, and it was I, quite good. Quite I, first Mario. I say they're releasing the same game over and over. I mean, Pokemon has been the same game over and over and over and over, hmm. and it's still a fucking great game. Yeah, they just tack on some extra bells and whistles. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they kind of got their thing down, but I don't know. I, I, I want a bit more creativity, really. I, I'm um, just really kind of curious what's going to come out of this merger. Like, is yeah. is Microsoft just buying them as an asset so they have another gaming studio and going to let them do their own thing, or...? I imagine so. Uh, what, what do you think the best and the worst things that are going to be from Microsoft uh, well, in, in Blizzard? I think... I, you actually had a good point on this the other night uh, when we were talking. I, talk I about this. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll let you talk to, th- to that point, so that's something... I'm hoping that I'm hopeful and fearful that there might be something more with StarCraft um, because mm. StarCraft I still love playing it. It's still got a very very active player base. It's not you know growing, uh, and as far as I can tell, it's not really shrinking that much either. Uh, like whenever I log in, I can usually find a game within a couple minutes. But not even that. Like if I'm playing like one v one, I'm in a game in less than a minute. But it isn't nearly as on fire as it used to be. So if Microsoft can maybe do some other stuff in the StarCraft universe, maybe um, potentially get put light a fire on, under somebody's ass to make a StarCraft 3, I'd be happy. I was going to say, do you think there's ever going to be a StarCraft 3? I honestly don't know where they would go with the story anymore because they've. I'm, I'm currently, you know, when I just, as a side thing, uh, streaming the entirety of the StarCraft 2 campaign and i'm on the protoss campaign which is the very last one and spoiler alert at the end of that campaign you fight what is essentially a fucking lovecraftian elder god that is going to end the universe and create it all life and blah 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 and where do you go after that you've already like made your armies powerful enough to blow up god what now i'll tell you what what happens after that you have a big fucking time warp event uh, episode and it reverts you back to the beginning when pr- tools were primitive and there's a new bigger threat that's jumping around in space and time to uh, destroy them from 
so they'd stop them from killing the elder god in the second game. Nice. That's I'd where it's gonna to... fucking go. Yeah, that yeah, you know, that works. I'd love to kill Doctor Who with a Zergling. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a, that reminds me. You need to get that Zergling mount. Yes. On uh, here, oh, uh, heart of the. So, here's the storm. I wanted to say heart of the swarm. That's they really fucked those acronyms. Beca technically, it is swarm. They're both. They're. This is something stupid that Blizzard did with these two games. the The second expansion in StarCraft Two is Heart of the Swarm, and then their MOBA is Heroes of the Storm, and they're both called Hots. Yeah. Just so when I was looking up how to spe spectate Heroes of the Storm the other day, I was getting Heart of the Swarm spectating. Mm. <sighs> but yes, Heroes of the Storm, that's what I want to talk about, because this is the one game I play from Blizzard, really. I occasionally dabble in Overwatch, uh, even less in StarCraft 2, personally. Um, but Heroes of the Storm. They could bring so much to that game very easily, I feel like. Unless the code is, like, really fucking shittily been written and they just fired all of their developers because maybe they were all touching women. <laughs> um, they're, like, fuck. Imagine, like, you, you're going down mid with rain or what? Oh, probably not mid. But, and then on the other team, they've got fucking Master Chief coming towards you. <laughs> oh my god. That would How actually... fucking cool would that be? It'd be bananas, but it would be amazing. Well, I'd just have a new main, is what would happen. Yeah. In that game. And then Minecraft Steve comes out of the woods. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny you mentioned the... Well, it's not funny, but the whole... The controversies that Blizzard had. Um, mm. I'm kind of wondering if... Because cause their stock tanked after that. They had to fire a lot of key oh, people. Yeah, like. Absolutely. Um, and the people who did get to stay there are being harassed and tortured by activists. So mm -hmm. I, I think that Microsoft saw an opportunity to like, oh, this is a really big name company. They got a lot of mm -hmm. popular franchises. They got a lot of hardcore fans. And they're cheap as fuck right now. Exactly. So this is our opportunity to go in there, snatch them up, get a nice yeah. big asset that we can use. Because, I mean, it's the best of worlds both best of both worlds in that they are taking the, the, the actual property which has all the value mm. and they are getting rid of all of the crappy people that have been fucking it for the past few years don't get me wrong there's some really good people working at Blizzard and those people I'm pretty sure are still there or if they haven't quit which I can understand um, yeah best of both worlds everyone's happy the consumers are happy because you know yeah. Whatever his name, Bobby Kotick's not in charge anymore. I don't know. I don't uh, think that guy was... He was the CEO, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think... I, I didn't really think there was a problem with that that guy. Like, the problem was with... Apparently that, he's very sketchy. So are most nerds. <laughs> like... Oh, this guy... I don't think he's... He's not the nerd type. He's the businessman. Oh, type, okay. More than anything. I don't know, but I thought he was with the company from the beginning... I don't we, know. How we, we're, 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 we're kind of speculating at this point, but mm. um, I don't know. Blizzard, I, I really do hope that Microsoft kind of helps them like refocus on actually making good games. Um, the old values. Because they, they made some really weird decisions, like artistic decisions with some of their more recent stuff. Yeah, they used to be like front runners in the graphic. Like StarCraft 2, those animations for the time were the head of the game. Oh, yeah. Like, Nothing beat them. It's a gorgeous uh, RTS, and then all the pro players played on the lowest settings, so they didn't have all the graphical <laughs> stuff getting in their way. True, but for the for the most part, the the majority of people will be want yeah. to see it in full glory. And these days, you're seeing World of Warcraft animations coming out, and they look like absolute trash. Like fans have been making their own equivalents of the same cutscenes, mm. and they look so much nicer, and they've been done in half the time with half the people. Um, well, on this uh, subject of World of Warcraft, there was also the controversial uh, decision to turn a painting of a woman into a bowl of fruit. Well, I don't think there's anything controversial about it, Kaiser. It's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Fruit's better. It's um, like a werewolf, but a werefruit. <laughs> um, the controversial decision to make the uh, Amazon in Diablo 2 look like William Defoe. Yeah, that was a bit 
yeah, that was just. I don't think that was that was I, anything to do with anything apart from the designer just had a bit of a weird day. <laughs> yeah. Um. But no, I and, and that I do hope that they uh, they kind of get back to you know making good games. World of Warcraft, though, I, I I kind of can't fault them too much for having minimal like minimal graphics. You know what I mean? Like, because World of Warcraft, the one of the keys to its popularity is you could basically run it on anything. So when it first like was like growing in popularity, like you could run it on the most piece of shit toaster desktop. You could run it on laptops, you could run it on whatever. Back when mm-hmm. it first was like going up and they really didn't change much of that. It still had that same kind of low polygon cartoony art style even in like yeah, 2000. It's about the story, not the look. Well, this it's about the addiction, not the look. It's about, like, you know, getting you hooked on that level-up noise and, you know, eventually the whole clans and raiding and all that other random stuff that MMO players like that I don't understand. Well, you say that. I mean, you know how addicted I am to the, the you know, Palmon's join the city noise. <laughs> and I'm sure you're the same. <laughs> well, yeah, and I'm, I'm guilty of playing through games and doing, like, achievement hunting. Yeah, um, also, there have been times where... Because I've obviously been playing Pokemon recently, as you know, and Alicia's been, like, sleeping in bed, and I've been playing it, well, next to her. And I'll go into the Pokemon Center, and you'll hear the... Da, 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 da. Mm. <laughs> so, like, are you healing your Pokemon? Yeah. <laughs> it's something that the, uh, I think, a lot of marketing people realized a long time ago. There's a lot of power in a jingle. You know, just mm. that, that short little tune that sticks in your head. Just a little bar. Yep. Yeah, but that that happened this week. Um, I'm, I mean, Microsoft can't. I I'm jinxing this right now, but I'm gonna say that Microsoft probably can't do much worse than Blizzard has, with Blizzard's own properties. So, yeah, I mean, as the worst case scenario, I mean, obviously, I'm just gonna be talking about Hots, but <laughs> the worst case scenario is that they're like, okay, we've got other bigger priorities than HOTS, we don't really care about it, we're going to keep the servers running probably, but there's not going to be any new updates, and that's fine, it's like, okay, whatever, nothing's going to change. But it could, it's given me hope. <laughs> uh, and hope Somebody is might... infectious. Well, I, that's one of the things I'm thinking, with like, um, I'm hoping that Microsoft is greedy, and I'm hoping they're greedy because they might look over at League of Legends and go like, ooh, we want a we piece, of that, a piece of that pie. Yeah. yeah, and it's like now we own a MOBA, and we're gonna make our MOBA great. And do they own any other MOBAs? No, no. They, I don't even think they like the franchises they own. Um, just they own two RTSs that I can think of. Like they have the Age of Empires, uh, you know, license or not right. uh, the the rights to that. Mm. You know, they just re-released Age of Empires or released Age of Empires four. Um, they also have Halo Wars, the that RTS franchise, which is pretty yeah, good. I don't think that is it popular. I, I, it doesn't come up in conversation much. It's basically the only successful console R- RTS. Like it's been attempted multiple times to make an RTS that's friendly for console. Halo Wars mm. is the only one I've ever seen that actually functions well. Um, and you can play it with a mouse and keyboard too if you want. It is available on PC. Um, I know Red Alert Three was released for the PlayStation. And yeah, and I played it, I completed it, but yeah, controllers and RTS don't mix with me. Yeah, it, it takes a little getting used to, but they did a lot of um, like quality of life things with Halo Wars that actually, um, like they, they took the time to find something that it's never going to be, RTS is one of those things where it's never going to be as accurate or have the same skill ceiling as you have with a mouse and keyboard, but they managed mm. to get very close um, with those games, and they do still have you know quite an active uh, odd, or an active player base because I I have it for the the Xbox One uh, Halo Wars Two, and I was playing. I decided to try playing the multiplayer, and I got into a match pretty quickly. Like there's still a decent amount of people playing it. Are there any MOBAs for consoles aside from Unite? Smite. Uh, I I I recognize the logo in my head. Is that the one that was like a basically a Smite. Overwatch style graphics? 
is in a way. Um, so it's it's an over the shoulder shoulder third person MOBA. So you are controlling uh, one character just like in a MOBA. You have like four abilities and like an ultimate and some other items and stuff, and you build your character up over the mm. course of the battle. There are minions you fight. There are objectives and buffs on the map. It, I used to play it a lot with my cousins uh, years yeah. ago. Um, this was before the Hive even existed. Mm. Or back when it was a Ventrilo server and not yeah, a Discord that. server. Yeah. Uh, so I used to play it with them uh, on the PC. But it's also available on console. And I actually, even on the PC, I played it with a controller. But there were some very awkward controls to the point where I like I had to develop this like hook fingered control style and mm. to this day I actually use this even when I'm playing Halo to you know do some maneuvers but I'll normally you hold a controller like this where you've got you know index and middle fingers on the bumpers and yeah. triggers you've got your thumbs on the control sticks and the buttons I held it like this so I had I used my index finger to press the buttons and then had my thumb on the right stick so I could turn right. and attack and move at the same time. That's the triangle, circle, X, square button that Kaiser was referencing with his index finger. Yeah, or A, B, X, Y if you're playing on the Xbox. Yeah. Um, it was a very weird control style, but once I got used to it, it was actually a lot of fun. Yeah, I played... That game is like, instead of champions or like the heroes we have from the, the MOBAs we're familiar with, um, they mm. had essentially pantheons of gods. So you could play as like Odin... Thor, Ra, uh, Anubis. Cool. Yeah. It was, it was a very fun game. And hmm. I actually wouldn't mind playing it again sometime. But uh, oh, Maybe I'll try it out. But yeah, that one is, is for console. And it actually functions quite well with a controller. Um, mm. yeah. I assume it's, it's a free and then Free paid. with microtransactions, just like yeah. most of the for others. Skins? Skins, boosts. skins, boosts, and extra characters. Mm. It's the same thing with like League or with um, Hots. It doesn't There's... give you an in-game advantage, though, is what I'm saying. Uh, no. I mean, you can, you can buy a bigger roster of characters. Yeah, there's no, there's no pay to win in that. Yeah, that's good. Other than you know, buying a better character. Because <laughs> that that's like that's like one of the few questions. Like it used to be, you go to a game shop and be like, okay, got to check that this game runs on my version PC, basically mm -hmm. version. Uh, and then you check the price tag and other things. These days, the first thing I ask is, does it have pay to win? Well, it's very easy to check. You know, is it made by EA? True. If yes, it does. If no, is it Is it doesn't. a mobile game? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is it a mobile game? Uh, yeah. I just talked to someone the other day, and he's quite a bit older than both of us. Mm. And he's like, nah, I play games like uh, Clash of Clans, <laughs> I played Clash of Clans, don't get me wrong, when I was when it came out. And I played it for like a year, year and a half, something like that. But eventually I realized that it's and I know you can say that any online game is just repetitive and the same thing over and over mm. again. But I feel like it was far more limited in the actions that you could do in it, and it just felt like a cookie clicker that takes people's money. Yeah, yeah, and those those types of games can really, you know, really suck you in because there is something appealing about doing, like, think of it this way, like, people go out and they, they'll play soccer, or they'll play mm. baseball, or they'll play football, mm -hmm. and that game is pretty much the same every time, but it's still satisfying to play the game, because the, the overall game is the same, but what occurs in it is different every time and you can it, it's a way to test yourself and challenge yourself and i think that's yeah. where the appeal in a lot of competitive gaming comes in yes and you're you playing get, the same thing with the same parameters but yeah. and you can get overwhelmingly either positive or negative things happening like kind of in clash of clans the most negative thing that can happen is that you can you know your army dies and you just rebuild it for the next day in let's, let's say hockey you get a puck in the face you're in hospital for like a month, um, oh, yeah. or like you do an amazing uh, like run in rugby where you get the ball, sprint the entire length of the pitch with the entire enemy team on your on your heels, and then fucking dive across the line, and it's yeah. just <sighs> it's very like sad. It. Yeah, no, I used to play. Um, well, I didn't. My dad used to be a hockey player. I did. Um, well, I did baseball when I was younger, but when I was older i did track and field and mm. getting into races like that like the actual like sprinting races um on the track like you 
it's it's a very positive feeling when to competing and actually you know having the real risk of losing and also the potential for that that eminent satisfaction of winning it's a very powerful emotion for people yeah um, especially because there's like crowds generally around these pitches mm. and you you can feel the support around you or the people like gripping the edge of their fucking seats i i will say that one thing and i think it this was the first time that my my parents really comprehended like the appeal in competitive gaming because it, it sounded like kind of an oxymoron to them um mm. until i i was showing them like either it was either a starcraft tournament in korea or a, a league tournament and it was like because your parents are both pretty competitive well yeah and then you, so you see stadiums of people you know cheering on these people on a computer and mm. then it's on the screen and you got people cat calling it out and it has all the f the familiar trappings that you would expect with a sporting event and it mm. was that that was but when it's it kind inside of clicked. And warm. <laughs> it's in, hey some some sports are done inside like high lie like what have you never heard of high lie no, never heard of it. It's a it's a fairly obscure sport. It was it was big in like um, Mexico and South America, and it it made a few inroads in the '60s and '70s into the U.S., particularly in the. What uh, do you do? So there's a, a uh, like a hoop or a net or something, um, yeah. and you have these these gloves called a fronton, I think it is, and um, it, it's like this basic giant cup, and there's a ball. And then they use that cup to like whip the ball, and you have to like whip it through the hoop and you know pass it to each other by catching it with this thing. Are those with the like that? That's the one that kind of looks like hockey, but with like net sticks things. No, you're, you're... thinking of um, lacrosse. Uh... That's a different game. But so with the lacrosse, you're actually holding a stick, but you're still flinging a similar ball. With highlight, mm -hmm. you've got like basically it's like it's a glove, gaunt yeah. it's a gauntlet that has like this long curved thing coming off of the knuckles. That sounds awesome. It is, it, and it's it's really cool to watch. It's also yeah. terrifying because if one of those balls catches you in the face, you're fucked. Yeah, <laughs> that's what <laughs> any any sport with a, a really like hard ball. Nope, <laughs> I'm good. We used to play. I'd uh, rather play rugby. We used to play racquetball in, uh, not rack. I think no. Um, is it racquetball? What's the one where you're inside like a giant cube and you're like slamming a wall off the back? Squash. Squash. We used to play squash a lot in college because we found out they had squash cor courts in our college squash gym. Squash is quite fun. Yeah. yeah, and because it's a fucking nerdy engineering school, no one ever rented them out. So we usually yeah. we, we'd like reserve them and we'd just play in there for like a few hours. Um, yeah, great to get fucking tension out. It's like the equivalent of punching someone. Well, yeah. It also hurts like hell when one of those things hits you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I say that. It hurts like hell if it hits you. It just stings if it like catches you most of no, the body. I, I got to... So, we had this... We weren't trying to do this, but I was in there with like three of uh, three or four of my friends. And um, my friend Will, you know, like we went to serve. It's like, okay, serve it. It bounces off the wall, catches him right in the chest. Yeah, and then it was like it was you know unintentional. Like sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold on. Yeah. All right, give it to someone else. They served it, slammed it off the back wall, caught him right in the nuts. <laughs> and it happened like three times in a row, and it was all by accident. Like it was just really shitty luck on Why his part. Why did he part. fucking stand behind someone? <laughs> like <laughs> by the end of it, like after the third one, he was just on the ground, just going, "Why?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I think we've all been there at some point. Oh yeah. Uh, Juan hit nah. me in the throat with a softball. Oof. Wait, hey, softball. What? Softball's like baseball, but it's huge. Oh okay. It's it's basically, and you have to serve it differently and use a different kind of bat. What's um, the what's the British rounders? Rounders, like. is, yeah. What you're thinking of? But yeah, softball. Mm. He he like threw it badly. Um, and it like hit the ground. Well, so he says. <laughs> yeah, well, it's Juan doesn't exactly have great athletic ability. Anyway, but yeah, it hit me in the throat. Yeah. Oh. Ah, fun Man. times. Mm. How did we get here from Blizzard? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. Anyway. All right, that's enough talking about you know games and competition. You said you had something you wanted to talk about. Was it a, a bus story or? Oh yeah, oh, fuck. Well, it's not much. I was just, I had a bad day this week. 
And it was just one of those days when you have lots of little niggling things that stack up, and by the end you're just spitting blood. Yeah. Um, I started cycling recently, as you know. Mm -hmm. And previous to cycling, I've always been kind of the opinion that there aren't many nice cyclists out there. No, they're typically assholes. And now I understand why. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I was on my way home from work, again, after a long day. And it's like pitch black out there because it's winter at the moment. Um, I've also been riding, so I've been riding a bike for about three weeks now. And before this, I've basically never ridden a bike in my life. Bicycle. Mm -hmm. And some toss pots in a car decide to suddenly rev the engine and overtake me on, uh, while, while honking the horn. And like waving their fists out of the window and shouting in an attempt to to knock me off the bike. And I'm like, oh, that really pisses me off. I don't know about in the UK, I'm pretty sure that's a crime here. I pff, fucking should be. Um, yeah, it was. Nothing bad happened because I was able. I, it, I jumped, but you know, I stayed on and was fine. But goddamn! Why well, you gotta be such a fucking guy? If I had, like, fallen off my bike, the next car behind them had just run me over. Like, yeah. What kind there, of heartless moron have you got to be to do something so fucking dangerous? There was... So, I actually... Story about this. Um, back when I was in high school, I, I knew mm. this guy, and I fucking hated him. Um, but I knew him through, like, another friend. Uh, he was just an absolutely awful person. Um... Now, can I say that he's an awful person because he's dead now? You should we not speak ill of the dead? Anyway, he um, he followed this car. Just th- he was out with some friends, and they they fo- they were he was driving behind this other car, dark road, late at night, and he tailgated them with his bright lights on, like oh, with with his you, yeah. the fog lights on, and the car went off the road because he couldn't see a turn, and he, he I. They weren't going yeah, that no, fast. Yeah, that guy's a cunt. I'm sorry. Dead yeah, no, no, exactly. So he, he, you know, he ended up, I, I heard this story again from, um, you know, one of my other friends because he was in the car with him at the time. Mm. Um, and he apparently, like, panics, like, oh, shit, oh, shit, I can't go to jail. And he just sped off. Didn't even check to see if the guy was Wow. Up. Yeah, so this, wow. this horrible douche. But to your point, yeah, there's, there's plenty of fucking assholes out there. Fuck that guy. Like... Okay, so obviously in the past I've ridden motorbikes and mopeds quite a bit. Mm. And yeah, you definitely get people when it's like an icy day or something and you're riding along and you're going at max fucking speed because, I mean, it's a moped. It's yeah. max speed or nothing. Max, yeah, max speed is like, what, 30, 40 miles an hour? Uh, I think I got up to 70 at one point. Mm. Um, on a dual carriageway with the wind behind me. Mm. Um... And yeah, some people, they're like, oh, a motorbike, they're doing it. It's like they think that I do it just to, to piss other people off. And it's like, moped is is the the first like motorized vehicle that you can really ride in England. So I was like 16. So a 16 mm. year old kid trying to just get to his job or school or whatever. And yeah, they tailgate you. Uh, if... If you're coming up some traffic lights, they'll wind down the window and give you abuse because you're not driving at above the speed limit. Because I basically always did the speed limit. Yeah. Um, or they just overtake you because even though you're doing the speed limit, they see you as a slower vehicle. And then they'll just overtake you and then go up the normal speed limit anyway. It's like, well, fuck you. <laughs> I fucking so, hate that. This is something that... So my state gets a lot of uh, bad bad rap uh, in the u.s Mm. at least because we're widely considered to be some of the worst drive worst drivers in terms of aggression like Mm. you do have far bigger roads though we do massachusetts drivers are very angry very aggressive but very competent drivers in general Mm. like because we have horrible weather the roads are constantly icy we get blizzards and we also get crazy hot weather so just in general and everyone drives like you know at least 20 miles over the speed limit so in that kind of environment, it breeds people who drive very well, but like assholes. And I mm. thought 
that like I'd seen the worst of it living here for most of my life because yeah I'd go out to see you know um, family out in you know Iowa or Nebraska and people are insanely polite there do exactly the right speed limit they're you know they're always indicating they're waving friendly to people on the road polar opposite here I thought I'd seen the worst of it here until I started driving in Europe for work <sighs> Jesus Christ I had not seen the First of all, the UK, you guys, your roads are like half our size and you guys drive twice as fast. It's crazy over there. Yeah. But the king prize for the most Crumbs. aggressive asshole drivers, France actually, no, France was bad for town driving. Okay. So when I was just in France and I was driving just around the inner city and everything like that, that was harrowing because people would go like, they'd literally have 100 meters to drive. Hmm. And they'd get they'd get up to like easily fifty miles an hour in that space, and then just immediately stop. Yeah. And there's there's pedestrians, there's bikes, and the whatever. And I was just that was that was harrowing. But no, highway driving is what I was thinking of. And the worst I've seen for that is Belgium. Really? I don't know what is going on in Belgium, because it's not it can't just say Dutch in general. Because I also drove in the Netherlands, and that wasn't too bad. But Belgium, like I was on the highway and the speed limit was like uh, 90 kilometers an hour so something like 55 miles an hour okay um sure. wait highway at 55 miles per hour yeah it, nothing. yeah well exactly i was going uh, about 115 120 kph which is closer to like 70 miles an hour okay and i was the slowest person on the road like people were easily doubling the speed limit and then like honking at me pulling around me try, like i i was like i got i got to speed up like, because Jesus. I'm going to get run off the road by these crazy people. Yeah. And Fuck. I guess they don't they, they don't have speed cameras, and I don't know if their their cops don't care or whatever, but I never saw a single police officer on that highway, and people were driving like fucking maniacs. Jesus. And that's, like, that's I'm just talking about, like, you know, um, you know, European and, and U.S. Um, that's not even, because I've, I've also been in India and hmm. um dominican republic and they have a very similar kind of chaotic driving style where everyone beeps every five seconds yeah. it's just you just because everyone just makes up their own lanes so they just kind of beep as a form of echolocation to make sure they don't crash into each other yeah geez i, I mean i'm going through like a quiet little town on a 15 20 minute bike ride mm. um and I still feel terrified. Even though there's even quite a, quite a lot of it is is cycle pathed, which mm. even someone who doesn't like cycle path that doesn't like bicycles, can, I, th I think, can appreciate cycle paths because yeah. a it keeps the cyclists off the pavement because some cyclists are assholes and just only ride on the pavement, which they shouldn't do. Mm. Um, or uh, and and. Yeah, I don't know. Normally, it, it takes a bit out of the road as well, so the pavement is a bit wider. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think they should I do it the other way. Take a bit out of the sidewalk. Leave more room on the road. They, they quite often do. Um, but they actually... the the Like I said, it was in a, like, a little villagey town. Yeah, I, uh, I so don't really have a problem anyway. with, with bike lanes um, in places where they, they make sense, like heavily urbanized areas. Mm. Um, the problem I have is where they like take away space right now. Like Boston has the same problem that a lot of cities in Europe and particularly in the UK have, where it was kind of built up around all these like wagon trails and small like roads, and then now they have to somehow make room for the massive amount of traffic that suddenly exists. Hmm. But yeah, so uh, well, my bike's actually got a puncture and it's uh, in the repairs now so I get a brief respite from that, that terror yeah uh, yeah. was that something else you wanted to talk about before we move to segment 3 I was going to talk about the Witcher because I've been playing that this week but I can save it for another time it was basically just you know if we had time to talk about it I've been okay, modding well, the Witcher we'll probably have time in segment 3 probably alright uh, that's a good place to end you know, be be kind to people on the road, and look forward to Halo being the next character in StarCraft Two. Um, <laughs> right. Halo, that old character. Jim Rayner's going to show up in Halo Infinite. 
It's just a giant fucking ring. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is going to be the end of segment one of the TMCJ podcast. Thank you all for listening. And you'll hear us again momentarily for segment three. Welcome back to the TMCJ podcast. We are on segment three, our wild card segment. And this week we are back to an old game that we do enjoy. But we stopped for a while because we were running out of ideas. Um, it was So our uh, long story short is the name of the game. Basically, the way it goes is we have three different segments of it. The first part, we will choose a story for ourselves or a basically a book, movie, video game, anything that has a plot. And we have to summarize it in a minute and 30 seconds. If we, and the other person will keep track of it with a, with a timer. Um, and then we rotate, then switch. Then we go into the second segment where one of us will be giving the other one something to describe. Something that we think that they should know well enough. Should be fairly easy for them. Again, they'll have 30, a minute and 30 seconds. Blue's making weird motions on the screen. Um, and then for the third one, it's also us choosing one for the other, but what we choose has to be something we don't think they'll be able to describe too easily. It'd be kind of difficult for them. And if they don't know it that well, they just have to make shit up. So it should be fun. There we go. Uh, I don't have a dice on me today, but I'm sure you do. I do indeed. I've got this fancy D12 here. Uh, what do you want? Okay. Evens or odds? I'll take, uh, I was going to take seven and up. All right, take seven and up then. It's ten. You're first. Or you Wait, get to does choose. Wait, that mean I win? No, I you, choose. Yeah, uh, ten, so you get to choose. I'm going to make... Ooh. Uh, I, I, will, I will go first. Alright, blue is starting <clears throat> us off. Let me get my stopwatch up here on the screen. Boom. Uh, so we're doing, what, uh, a minute thirty? Was that it? Yep. Okay. I think we've experimented with different times... And that yeah. was the best one, like the best balance. We tried going Problem up to two is, minutes, and we tried going down to a minute. But yeah, we, we we've we we used the timer for so many different segment three sections that we just forget which ones are which. Yeah, but I think this was the one we had the most consistent success with. Minute thirty. Yes. All right, are you ready? What are you doing? Describing. I, I, I am going to be describing the story of Dismantle. The game. Oh, okay. This game that he's been playing actually has a story. I didn't realize that. Yes. A basic story, but we shall see. All right. Start in five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, Dismantle starts you off where you're coming out of a, uh, a nuclear kind of bunker, and the whole world's gone to shit. Everyone else is dead. There's zombies everywhere. There are no other friendly people on the planet. Uh, and you start off in this little, like, walled-in area with a few houses, and you need to clear away... As you go, you need to upgrade your stuff so you can destroy more stuff to get materials to make better stuff. And you kill some zombies to get out of the initial closed-in area, and that's when you, the game properly starts. So your goal is to escape the island, um, because it seems that the, the contagion, the virus, is only on this island. So you try and get to this, like, escape pod, which the military um, have uh, behind some locked doors. And you, after a while, you manage to get there, after fighting your way through a lot of zombies, and then you find the escape pod, but it has no fuel cells. And the four fuel scales have been s cells have been scattered around the four points of the island. 30 seconds. To get to the fuel, the fuel rods, you have to... The first one is, like, behind... It's in a maximum security prison. You have to kill a bunch of, like, prisoner zombies and then fight this giant robot to get it out. Next one's in, like, a really hot area where you need a um, safari outfit, otherwise you just burn up and die. Uh, then there's a gas area. Ten you need seconds. a gas mask to get into it. Uh, there's radios all around the place being broadcast from a place called the Crown Station, which is basically telling people to kill themselves. There's a big boss who... Um, Time. He was getting killed. Ah, oh, fuck. I didn't have enough. I thought I would need so little time, but I needed so much more. <laughs> that was... Fuck. That was quite a bit. Yeah. So are there actually, God. like, named characters in that? Or are you making, like, a custom character and playing through it? No, there's a, there's, there's a main character. I don't know if you know his name, because he doesn't talk to anyone else, mm. so you don't really find that out. But... 
there is it's modern day society, but there's uh, like manor, um, which is what has fucked this island over so bad. Mm. It's turned it's it's assuming assumed to be the cause of the zombies, and it also fucks with time when you're close to too much manor is in one place. It slows time. Mm. Um, and there's one person who supposedly brought about the manor, the the one armed man. Mm. And the whoever the council were of humans thought that the one armed man wasn't helping them enough, so they tried to kill him, and that's when everything went to fuck. Mm. It seems. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, it's me now, and I yeah. uh, am going to be describing the plot for uh, Halo Infinite. Fuck! That's why I gave you for the easy one. Oh, is it? Okay. That's fine. I've got a stand-in. Okay, you've got as long as you've got another one, I'll do this. Yeah. Uh, yes. Let me just bring up the timer. 1 minute 30. Great minds think alike. Also, <laughs> we haven't played that many games recently, so I guess it was inevitable. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Are you all ready? I'm ready. Alright, 3, 2, 1, Halo. Alright, Halo Infinite opens up with a cutscene of Master Chief fighting some, uh, you know, brutes and other Covenant on a ship. Uh, he's getting his ass handed to him. He gets thrown out into space and dies. Then he's found a few months later by this, you know, suave Spanish man who's in the back of a pelican, you know, growing a massive beard because he's been alone for six months. Pelican? He wakes Pelican, it's the dropships. Uh, wakes Master Chief up by plugging a battery into his ass. Master Chief gets up, refuses to do the tutorial, and then flies out of the back of the ship trying to get a weapon, lands on a Covenant ship, shoots a bunch of shit, and then gets back on the Pelican, and then they land on the Zeta Halo, which you don't really know what it is at this point. Most of the game, you're piecing together what happened before the game even started. You spend your time in the Halo, running around. Uh, oh, you found a... Uh, Halfway. A shiny new Cortana, who's just like a mini Cortana, who's there to kill the old Cortana, because she went crazy, because 343 was stupid. Then you go around and uh, unlock a bunch of bases, you fight off a bunch of brutes, you take a bunch of strongholds, and you are piecing together what this ring was used for. You unlock this crazy old evil person who teams up with the brutes. Um, in the end, you fight. Her. Seconds. In the end, you fight her in the middle of a giant arena, uh, blow her to pieces, and then you have a big friendship moment with the new AI and the Spanish man. And he gives Master Chief a hug, and the story will continue. That's done. It. Yep. Okay. Cool. Man, you have to do it with, like, five seconds to go. Halo Infinite's story isn't very dense. Like, there's a lot of... What is it? A lot of uh, showing without telling in that. Right. Where you kind of have to piece things together as you go along by either finding audio logs or by seeing the aftermath of battles and things. And um, mm. But the actual, like, major plot points are fairly spread out. And I, I kind of like it. Okay. Right, what's my uh, what's my easy one? Ah, uh, your easy one is Sonic Adventure Two. Okay, okay. Yeah. Do you know the plot, or do you just play the Chow Garden? <laughs> <laughs> you mean that's not the plot? <laughs> All right. Okay. You ready? Uh, it's all over me. Okay, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Go. Okay, Sonic Adventure 2 starts with Sonic jumping out of a military aircraft and surfing his way through a city to escape the uh, the, the government, I guess. I don't know why. Um, oh, because he's being hunted down because a hedgehog that looks a lot like him has been causing a lot of trouble. It turns out the Dr. Eggman has broken into a military facility and broken up this hedgehog called Shadow. Uh, Shadow is... A big old fucking emo version of Sonic, who's evil technically, and they, uh... <laughs> yeah. So the police are trying to catch Sonic. Um, at some point, the Master Emerald gets, I think, shattered by Rouge or someone or Knuckles, maybe, in order to stop Rouge getting it. And so they spend the rest of the game trying to collect the piece of the Master Emerald for themselves. No, the Chaos Emerald. Is the Master Emerald and the Chaos Emerald the same thing? I don't know. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. So, they need to get the gems. Rouge is trying to get for Dr. Robotnik so that he pays her? Question mark? Uh, Knuckles is trying to do it to protect the world? Question mark? Tails is there. 
I'm uh, right. 15 seconds. Sorry. Then, fuck, they go to the, the desert, they go to a jungle, they go to space, there's a big laser. Then they uh, realize that they released something evil that Dr. Robotnik's father had made, and then they get Supersonic and Super Shadow to blow up the final flying right. space evil thing. I you, you hit most of the major plot points. Uh, first of all, Chaos Emerald and Master Emerald, very different things. Um, oh, the Master Emerald is what is, well, it's the Master Emerald, and the Chaos Emeralds are all kind of, you know, linked to it. Um, Don't they combine to make the Master Emerald? No. There are shards of the Master Emerald, because you get this part right, Knuckles destroys it because both Rouge and Eggman are trying to steal it, and he punches it to blow it apart. Yeah. Um, and then he's trying to hunt down the shards for it after that. The Chaos Emeralds are what they need to power this super weapon. Uh, they're also what Sonic and Shadow use to become Super Saiyans and blow up the monster thing at the end of the game. Gotcha. But yeah, you got yeah you got the major plot points. Boom. Yeah, I was I was like, oh yeah, hell yeah, I know lots about this game. And I was like, hang on, actually, yeah, there was with a lot you... of missions that didn't really do anything. Like the whole chasing the president scene is kind of pointless because you were you were forty seconds in and you had basically just described the first mission. Yeah, a lot. The first mission from both sides, to be fair. Yeah, true. Um, and there's a lot of waffle between the beginning and the end. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, just them kind of faffing around. I mean, yeah. the, the story's just kind of a supporting structure, and they needed and to find... And Tails was there. <laughs> <laughs> what did Tails do? <laughs> uh, what did he do, actually? Sonic caught the rocket that was going into space. Uh... Tails oh no, wait, that didn't go in space. Yeah. Tail broke into the president's motorcade. Yeah, but again, the president didn't actually do anything. No, he didn't. He was just there to be like, like, ah, look, a big political figure. They're there to raise the stakes. Yeah. Just kind of reminds me of um, the fucking lawyer game, what's it called? Uh, Phoenix Wright? Phoenix Wright, that guy. The blue suit and the black hair that's slicked back. <laughs> The president is Phoenix Wright in the Sonic. Yeah, um, yeah. all right. <laughs> Just fucking shouts people down. It's pretty uh, good. All right, what's cool. my easy one? Your easy one is going to be the entire Cowboy Bebop series. Okay. That's actually not too hard. Um, wait, have you watched the anime yet? So I'm just going to spoil no. shit for you. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to do the anime or the... TV series. I haven't watched the TV series, and I have no intention to. <laughs> True. This is my easy one. I don't my, my memory is shit. Okay. Um, Anime time. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. The Cowboy Bebop anime opens up with Spike Spiegel and a Jet on their ship, the Bebop. You quickly It's quickly established that they're bounty hunters. They're kind of, you know, tough out on their luck because... They haven't, you know, they, they keep messing up and losing money because, you know, they cause a lot of collateral damage when they're trying to chase down the bounty. Um, they go after this one guy who looks like he's going to be worth quite a bit of money. Turns out that he's some ex-syndicate guy who got away with a bunch of drugs and him and his wife are trying to escape to Mars for a better life. Um, she's pregnant, but she's not really pregnant because she's got a bunch of, you know, stolen drugs in her shirt. Um, that story is basically just establishing it. Next story, you find out how they get the dog. Um, really not that interesting. Awesome. Next story, you find out how they encounter Faye Valentine, the third main character of the story, besides the dog. Uh, she's kind of a con artist slash confidence person. Uh, they meet her in a casino because she gets them mixed up with the person she's supposed to make a drop with. Um, it all goes off and she screws them over and they get away. Um, then some stuff happens. They meet up with an eccentric uh, 20 seconds. Child genius called Edward, uh, who's actually a girl. They find Faye again and get her recruited onto the ship. They have bunches of shenanigans. You know, Spike's past comes back to bite him when the syndicate and the mafia come after him. Um, there's a big confrontation at the end, and Spike and Sephiroth shoot each oh. other. I can't remember his name. I called him Sephiroth. Yeah, <laughs> it is that. he is very similar, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's got Savage. a list of. Yeah, Vicious. His name is Vicious. Vicious. Savage is the goofy fucking name they gave Spike in the live action one. Yes. Yes. I skipped over. No, is it? No, it wasn't. 
I thought you said it was. I haven't seen it, so I'm going off of what you told me. Vicious and... Maybe. Well, whatever it was. Um, anyway. Yeah, the, the thing is, there's... In the middle... There's a middle chunk of the anime, which it's a lot of character development and self-contained plot lines. Mm. With a couple... I like that you two did the first half of the time on the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I realized, oh shit, I need to, you know, light a fire under it. <laughs> All right, now for the one that I think you are going to have a hard time with. Okay, can um, we do some alternate history again? <laughs> no, actually, uh, I want you to uh, describe for me the plot of uh, Harry Potter. Ooh, ooh. You've read the books, haven't you? No. Haven't you? Nope. Okay, so you don't know Jack about it. You I've, hate Harry Potter, don't you? No, I don't hate it. I, lo I love the movies. I love the movies, but the books... I didn't... Quick tangent here. I uh. didn't start trying to read the books, because I had friends that were obsessed with them. Mm. And I didn't start trying to read the books until I was already 18. And so starting with the very first book, which is very much a children's novel, when I was already an adult, was painfully boring yeah and like because it, it it moves so slow and it's such like childish writing in that first book and apparently it does like the books were written in, and props to jk rowling because she did a very good job with this she made the writing in the books mature with the audience that was reading them so mm. like as the people who read the books grew up, then the the writing itself got more complicated and dealt with more adult stories. And I thought that was brilliant. I just to couldn't... Be fair, what? The ending of the first one was a bit brutal. Yeah, well, so were most children's stories and fairy tales and fables. Like, I mean, I grew up watching Disney movies, and in all of those movies, the bad guy gets fucking murdered. Mm. Like Beauty and the Beast, Gaston gets thrown off a fucking building. Into a ravine. To be fair, though, that's kind of... A, it doesn't matter if the villain gets hurt, do you know? Mind you, in this in Harry Potter, he gets hurt. It's just more of a torture scene than a thrown off a building instant death. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just... It's just one of those things where it... Even if it's happening to a villain, hmm. it is brutally violent. Yeah. Um, yeah. That poor troll. Yeah. Anyway, but that's, that's what I want you to describe. Are you ready? Cool. I am ready. All right. Uh, t t 1 minute 30 on the clock, and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, Harry Potter's adopted by some assholes that keep him in a cupboard under the stairs. One day a big man in a big coat with a big beard comes in and says, You're a wizard, Harry! And then Harry's like, fuck parents, I'm going off to live in this magical world that the, the fat man gave me. And so he goes, and he's the fat man, I think, takes him around this magical city and gives him a special wand. <laughs> no, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> and an inheritance from his real parents, who are dead. Uh, and he got, it turns out, the scar he has on his forehead was from uh, a murderer a wizard trying to kill him as a child and failing, because they're an idiot. Um, and so then Harry's taken to a special school... No, he's taken to the Weasleys, where... It doesn't matter. Um, they're not important. Their school... Uh, he gets attacked by a troll in the ladies' bathroom, because he's with his girl... 30 seconds left. ...friend. Fuck. Uh, he sticks a wand up its nose. Uh, there's a chamber where people aren't allowed in. He talks to Hagrid about it, and Hagrid says something that he shouldn't. They go back and use a flute to tame a dog. Then they play a chess match against some knights that want to kill them. Then they catch a flying key. Then they get to a room with a mirror and a man in front of it who's a teacher, but he's also got a face of an e the evil murderer person on the back. I'm... Uh, the, the, Harry touched the guy, he burns to death in front of them. Go. Yeah. That, I mean, you, you got to the ending. Of the first film. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I kind of... I was Halfway through, I was just like, okay, I just did the first one. Yeah, There's I, no I way kind I of, I rest. realized that once uh, I said 30 seconds and you started speeding up, it's like, okay, he's just doing the first the first one. Um, yeah. Which is fine. I, you know, I thought I did quite a good... You did, good actually. Because I, I that's an old film. It, it is. Now, you were going through quite a bit um, of the plot points, and there were a few of them that I, I actually didn't remember. The whole key scene, I forgot about that altogether. Mm. Um, but no, I, oh, I, I forgot about the floor that ate them. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, and Ron fucking panics, and Hermione has to shoot it with Almost. a fucking lightning bolt. Yeah. Which one did she do it first? I mean... <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That was that was quite good. Uh, yeah, I, so... That was quite enjoyable. What, Your what final it, one. Yeah, what is my hard one? Your hard one is going to be the first Narnia film. Fuck. I read the Have books. You... Have you seen it? Oh no, you've read the books. Oh, well, you're gonna be fine then. I read, I read, I've read Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Okay, I've I've read it, but I haven't read it since I was like twelve. Yeah. So <laughs> that's like, what I was counting on. Let's see how the, how good my memory is. <laughs> okay, okay. We're going um, back also, more than two decades here. Yeah. Uh, are you ready? Uh, one second. I hate it, like, before we do these things, we, we get our, our things, what we're going to give the other person, mm. and it's only after the thing that I'm like, there's so many things that I could do, and I will not remember them for next time we do this. <laughs> That's what I'm actually doing, is just as those are popping, I'm like, ooh, I gotta jot that down. Yeah. Um, yeah, because right before we do this segment, just before we start this, I'm stalling, obviously. Mm. Um, we, we do, we, all, we struggle to think of just three things for each other. And yeah. then it's like, oh, why didn't we think of that? Why didn't we think of that? I'm going to spend the rest of the day going like, that would have been better. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> Lion, Witch, in the Wardrobe. All right. Okay. Three, two, one. Lions! All right. So these four kids, and I don't remember if they're related or not, go off to stay with some family members up in some manor in rural England. Uh, they explore this giant old house. Most of the rooms are full of dust and covered in sheets and shit. Uh, they eventually find their way to this this one weird room, uh, and they go inside of a wardrobe. And inside of it, there's a like a large snowy area with forest and trees. And they're greeted by this guy who uh, asks where they're from, and he's like a butler gnome or something like that. And um, <laughs> they, he, they tell them they're from uh, the, the from the wardrobe, and he's like, ah, you're from wardrobe or something like that. And then they they go on adventures and find out there's some kind of a war or conflict going on in this this realm there's a witch and there's a lion named asgard or something asriel or something like that and he's jesus Aslan. um and they, they he's jesus they like they become warriors and like uh like oh, 30 seconds important people in this world and they 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 participate in this war against these forces of evil that are you know threatening the good part of the world and um, I think at one point one of them die. No, the lion dies, and then he gets re resurrected by some noble act that one of the kids. I think one of the kids dies too, because he gets like shanked or something like that. No, maybe it's just the lion. Okay, five seconds. Anyway, it all they all live happily ever after, and then leave the wardrobe and come out like more grown up people or something like nope. that. <laughs> Is that wrong? <laughs> I I, re I remember the early parts of the book very vividly because it had such good like imagery in it and I loved that whole like exploring the old house part of it and so I was really detailed on that and then Mr. I Mr. Tumnus the butler gnome <laughs> I don't remember what he was he just in my mind he seemed like a butler it was like he, the, the he's first he's a goat man oh, he's a goat a, man um, okay what are they called a fawn oh a uh, satyr satyr yeah Okay. Um, I knew he was some kind of like small fantasy creature. I said gnome. I get so satyr, but yeah, he comes also, over. What the fucking? Um, you named the the Norse heaven or something, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, Asgard is what. I Asgard call. It's Aslan. Aslan. Oh fuck. Uh, they shaved Aslan mm. in exchange for one of the children, mm. um, and then they sacrificed Aslan at a stained table. I think. Yeah, I remembered there there so being there there was a like a big sacrifice involving him. I couldn't remember mm. exactly what though. And I could have sworn one of the kids dies in battle. Oh, but it, maybe it's just uh, that he got captured. Maybe that's what. Yeah, I'm I think I think that was it. Um, that might be what I'm thinking of. But they are fighting against the witch, right? And like the forces yes. of evil. Well, well, at first, one of the kids is on the witch's side. Hmm. That's not it's not those guy. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. And I don't think if they don't know if they mention it in the film or the book, but it's actually meant to be like the train journey at the beginning is meant to be the kids had died and they were going to 
this magical place. Mm. So they're all actually dead from the beginning, technically. Yeah, there there was there's been a lot of since when I, I mean when I read it, it was just like a magical journey as a kid. But mm. um, yeah, I've I've seen a lot more people doing like media analysis or referencing it and going like, oh, this is a metaphor for this. Aslan is a metaphor for Jesus. Yeah. And um, I don't know. <laughs> Norse and Christian. <laughs> I, I don't really give a shit about any of the whole symbolism. I, I don't, I'm not one of those people that gets like, ooh, this is a metaphor for this. Ooh, this is a mm. metaphor for this. I'm like, no, I'm just going to watch it and enjoy the story. Yeah, no, the Snow Queen was hot and she had some awesome fucking Minotaur dudes with axes. <laughs> See, I, 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 I've never seen the movie, but um, yeah, I really, I did really enjoy that uh, book as a kid, and I have oh, this. Father Christmas was in it. I have this um, habit of, like, when I read something, mm. I will like just when I'm reading it, I'll pronounce it differently or mispronounce it particularly because I feel like it has a better sound. Yeah. So like when the satyr greets them. There's like a dash, and he's like, "I see you're from you're from wardrobe," but I all- I think they say it's it's they, they say like where the city that they're from. I thought it was like Wareham or something, and it's Wareham. Yeah, in the in the books, uh, he said <laughs> they they say they they came through the wardrobe, and that's how he's like there this there are these people from wardrobe, and but I always left the R out when I read it in my head as a kid. I don't know why I still remember this, but I left the R out and pronounced it wardrobe. Because I thought it would be oh. even funnier if he mispronounced it, and he kind of said it weird. I thought you were going to say wardrobe, as opposed to the other R. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually lengthened it and then lost the uh, yeah lost the second R. I don't know. It's just yeah. it, it, and I don't know why that still sticks in my head after all these years that that was how I read it in my head. Hmm. Um, well, weirdly, what sticks in my head is that. Um. Turkish Delight. No kid likes Turkish Delight. Turkish Delight's gross. Um, I don't remember Because that. that's how she tempts him into being like her, the evil witch's mm. minion thing. Um, it's a Turkish Delight. And then, yeah. I actually... Uh, so was interesting. I, I saw the... There was an, another movie version of it um, mm. that, you know, before the modern one. And I don't know when it came out but i saw that one as a kid and i mean it was the, obviously like crappy special effects and uh it was on a vhs tape um mm. i actually uh, hold on well for a second i want to look this up yeah even in the um the later films of narnia they, they i just never liked the kids any of them really um susie wasn't so, but the girls weren't too bad. The boys were fucking idiots. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the girls were a bit cringy at times. Yeah, I wish I could remember. I want, I'm, I'm trying to look up when the original uh, movie came out. Yeah. Because that's... I imagine it would be about 2006. No, no, I meant the movie I saw, the one on VHS. Uh, that one would have been like in probably the eighties. Wait, Narnia. Yeah, here, which and hmm. sorry for all the dead air. Here it is, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, nineteen eighty-eight. Oh Jesus! God, it came out the same year I was born. Yeah, they they did. like here. Look, it has like all the like the shitty special effects and stuff like that. Oh, it's blurry. Yeah. Kind of looks like um, Wizard of Oz, but I they had this this one on it did it actually had a very Wizard of Oz vibe to it, mm. but I remember renting this movie when I was very young, um, back when they had like a you know video rental store. I got it on VHS. Um, I really enjoyed the movie. Hmm. But yeah, no, very good movie. very Wizard of Oz. The first I never, one was good. Well, I again I've I haven't seen the modern one. Yeah. So I might have to watch that sometime. Hmm. Oh. Anyway. Okay. How's your tea? It's actually getting kind of cold. Uh, I need more hot I ran water. I coffee in segment one. Hmm. Hmm. But that being said, because I refilled this with hot water, that's why I'm talking so fast. Because I've had two pots of black tea, which is 
way more caffeine than I should ever have. Yeah, I mean, fuck, I was talking so fast to that hot thing. I said, oh, you want to talk about Witcher? Oh, yeah, yeah, that'll that'll end us off. It's just, just one little quick factoid um, that I found out. We're talking about the game, not the TV series, right? We're talking about the game, uh, spe- yeah. specifically Witcher 3. Because um, I recently beat Witcher 2 for the very first time. Because previously, I beat the first game, I beat the yep. third game, I've read all the books, and I saw the first season of the TV show. Um, I hadn't ever beat the second game. I'd gotten like about halfway through it, but mm. the combat in that game was shit. The story was a bit disjointed. Um, but it it actually has some pretty interesting plot bits in it. And so I wanted to go back and actually finish it. Um, yeah. So I did that. Now I'm playing Witcher 3 again for the first time in years. And this is something I love about CD, CD Projekt Red. And because they also own good old games, um, they seem to be one of the most consumer friendly companies that exists in the video game industry. Because GOG, all the games are DRM free, so you don't have to deal with any kind of shitty copy protection program making your computer run like crap. Um, they have very good like refund policies and everything like that. Um, and in The Witcher Three, I found out. You can mod the game and it won't disable achievements. So, right. like, yeah, apparently you can. I, I looked this up and it's it's just they they don't care. Cause I'm not like modding the game to put anything like in it to make it easier because the game's easy, already pretty right. easy. Yeah. Um, no, I've just it, I've been playing it with all these new texture mods, all these like updated graphical and lighting settings, and mm. it's the game was beautiful when it came out. And now it's with all these you know extra mods on it. It's beautiful for the modern day. Nice. Just been having a lot of fun with that. And mm. I wanted to th- just again shout out CD. CD Projekt has gotten a lot of flack because of Cyberpunk, which yeah, I don't think they deserve. I actually just saw an article about uh, Cyberpunk where apparently there's a mod out there that turns into a bit of a survival game. Wouldn't be too hard. They, and again, I, I, I've i seen plenty of mods come out for the game, but I haven't tried modding it myself. Mm. Um, but I have beat Cyberpunk 2077 twice already. Um, and I'm, I'm waiting for their first big DLC to come out, because with The Witcher 3, like, they released one DLC, which was huge, and then they released a second one, which was, like, half the size of the original game. Like, it was... It was huge in terms of content and characters and story and all this stuff that you could do. So yeah. if they do the same thing for Cyberpunk, that'll be awesome. Hmm. Anyway. Cool. Very positive note to end on. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Ready to end it off? See people in two weeks. Oh, yeah. Remember, this is... So after this podcast, we're going to the new schedule, which is... It'll be a podcast every two weeks... And on the off week, that's when we'll be putting up uh, what used to be segment two, uh, which will be our like discussion of you know some kind of piece of media. In this case, the one that's going to be coming up is uh, R. Kelly's Hip Opera, Trapped in the Closet, Part One. Uh, so look forward to that. Anyway. That is, we are we have only read watched the first part. We're not reading any more than part one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any more than that, and yeah. God, we'll be singing. Mm. Um. Yeah. All right. This is going to be the end of episode 78 of the TMCJ podcast. Thank you all for listening, and you will hear us again next week. I wonder if there'll be a Candy Crush hero in Heroes of the Storm. <laughs>